Hello again. Now let's go to the other video about the calibration of the camera to use in using mocap. Well, we got here. I got here some videos. To do this, we need at least the calibration of the intrinsic camera parameters and the extrinsic camera parameters. And the video for the pose estimation using EasyMocap. In this folder, I have the video of the calibration of the intrinsic parameters, which means the you will use the script to see what are the particularities of your camera. So the script can undistort and make a better pose estimation. So here you see what kind of video we have. It's a simple video with a checkboard. In this case it's a, a 6x4 if I remember correctly. And this checkboard you have at the GitHub page. You can download it over there. And we already downloaded it. We already downloaded it here. This is the biggest one of the checkboard. And this is the smallest one. This is the smallest square one. One thing is important to notice. To notice, the bigger the square, the better the recognizability of the script. This is not a good one to use in a A4 paper. The other one is a better one because the square is bigger, larger. And even though it doesn't work so well, we're going to see how to, to fix this problem. So you have to print this and do a recording in several angles, like this one I showed, he I showed here. You record this video with all the cameras you're going to use. At the beginning, I suggest to use only two because it will be easier to deal. If it all goes well with the two cameras, then you can expand for more cameras to use in your setup. Okay, so it's the one video, video for the first camera, video for the second camera. You can see I try to move the checkboard and all the corners of the image so it can do a very good distortion. Uh, distortion. Uh, don't worry about the floor. I didn't. I forgot to clean it before doing this, but it won't affect the calibration. Okay, so you can take these videos. I'll put in the same folder. We we'll install it. I'll put it in the input. Um, I'll use the date. I like to use the date of the recording to be easier to know if it was for or later. It was this day. And Calip. Here I'm going to add a folder, call it videos. And paste the videos here. It's important to to rename it so it it's only number the first camera is one and you can not you cannot exchange the cameras the first camera the first calibrated camera will have to be the first one for all the work you done or else it will mess up the result Oh, one important thing I forgot to say. 
to record I usually use the, a, a single camera s app in the Android smartphone which is open camera so I can have the same configuration for all the smartphones so I always use a single size of image in my case I use a let me write here because I'm not good at seeing these big numbers the resolution is 1280 by 720 just let me be sure looking here exactly 1280 720 so you have to do the calibration, do the recording, string sync and the uh, footage to to do the post estimation at the same resolution, always the same resolution. Never forget that. So this was recorded in that resolution using the open camera. I try to put 30 FPS in all the cameras so I won't have problem syncing the footage between the cameras. Okay, so I use open camera, record that video to calibrate in one camera, second camera, put in this folder and I'm gonna to extract the files using a script. Let me change this, the folder is 24, Calib So I open the Anaconda prompt. Let me go to the folder. And activate the environment. Conda. Activate. Easy. Backup. And now I execute this script extract video that folder I added the video input the date calib no 2d when I execute it it is going to create a folder with the images for both cameras Okay, now that it extracted the images, we're going to execute the calibration so the script can recognize the checkboard. Important thing, the checkboard I'm using, you can see it has, let's, let's see. You can see here that it has one, two, three, four by one, two, three, four, five, six squares. But when you use the script, it doesn't count these squares, it counts the intersection. So in this checkboard, the pattern is one, two, three by one, two, three, four, five we count the intersection of the squares because of this is the pattern 3 and 5 3 5 and you must add you must measure the size of the square and add the this size here 
this size in, in meters. In this case, in my case, in uh, A4 paper, it was 46 centimeters the size of the square. So I had to add 0 0.0465. Okay, so I'll take this script. I have to change the folder. Just a moment. It's gonna be this one. Output calibration. Okay. As you can see, it's gonna take a while, so I'll pause it. Oh yeah, I remember, while that is doing its calibration on the checkboard for the intrinsic parameters, we can, we can do the installation of open pose that will also take a while to do. Uh, to do that, I'll try the 1.7 version. Besides, I'm, I'm using the 1.5, but let's try this one. You can just export this file. Uh, zip uh, extract here. So we have this open pose. After you Unzip it. Let me remember because there is a long time I did use this. I think it's in the bin file. Sorry for I didn't test it before. It's very low. I don't have very much time now. Ah, models. So, what do we do? I like to go to the prompt to do these things because if I do it right over here I usually finish it finishes and if it shows some error I won't see. So I can go to that folder so the model of them model and run. I think we need to run both. I'll run both. Get models. He's going to download the rest of the files needed for you. It will also take a while. So I'm going to pause it again. I was doing the download of the models and I saw that it was not being able to download them so I found uh, a link from the open pose issue page saying in a way that you can download the file in another way there's someone that sharing from their Dropbox there's also on other page like Kaggle that you could download uh, there's another one comment here that can help you. So here I'm gonna put this link so you can download it. I'm gonna put them open pose models download because you need them to run open pose and you have to check this github and put the models there so I'm gonna stop here and I'll I already have the models so I'm gonna take them from my other version and put here on this installation that I'm doing so see face I'm gonna get the it's this one copy model H 
hand. And pose. Body. You have to download from that link. I'm gonna put in the comment. Comment, no, the on the text below the video. Coco. Great. So here it is. And it was about time to finish the what I do the intrinsic checkboard stuff this part. That was when we stopped. And now at the chessboard detection. Now we are gonna to run going to run the calibration. This one takes a long time to do. For me it usually I think it took about 10 to 20 minutes and it doesn't show the progress here. You're going to wait until it finished the first. This is the first camera, then it is going to start the second one. And as more frames you have, more it will take to finish. So I'm gonna pause it again and come back as soon as this calibration finishes. Just a correction, it is taking more than an hour to process that second camera that you see it's more than double the amount of the frames. But it is processing, you can see here that it is calculating the calibration. So I'll wait a little longer and I'll finish the explanation. Finally, it finished. You can see here, it took this amazingly crazy huge amount of time. Oh, uh, so let it, uh, let, let's see. Now, after finishing the calibration, he created this output folder with this file. What I will do, I will, I will copy this file that's the interesting calibration for both cameras that we recorded the video and I know I sorry I will first create the folder for the video that we are going to do the post estimation it's going to be the 2021 and here I will paste that file, the, the intrinsic calibration file here. And the video. I already have the video that I recorded with my both phones, uh, Galaxy, Galaxy S8 and Note 2. The video, raw video is this. You see that it starts from nothing, then I go into start the recording from the other camera then I come here to the middle and I take my shoe and fold the floor that I do to sync the video files and I sync like this I open Blender I think it's the easier because Blender already has uh, video editing I open the video editing and I put the resolution of the video file here, which is 720. Then I 
take the video and put it here the first video and then the second video so if you see I'm gonna hide the second video and you s can see here that let me zoom then I show up here what I will do I will see where of oh them sorry let me put more frames to show and then I see where I'm going to release the shoes okay when it touches the floor I select the video and I press K so he split and remove this first part then I go to the second video and hide it and move back to see when I release my shoe okay then I see it fell on the floor so I move the mouse to the left side press K and delete then I select the first video press G to move then I see it's in frame 417 I press 416 minus so it goes to the first frame you see here 14 416 press enter same thing for the second video press G in this case it's damn sorry it's 204 to move so I press 204 minus and it goes to the first floor so I know these files are synced so I see to where I want the video I want to here so I select both move the mouse to the right part press K so I have already selected these ones and delete now I back a little bit and set the end of the recording here hide the second video choose to FFmpeg choose the place that I'm gonna save it it will be C all cap I'm gonna record it uh, easy mocap input this place I'm gonna create videos folder and save it here as 1.mp4 and render render animation so I'm rendering the first camera don't worry my dog loves to show up on the camera first video almost done and finished now I hide the first one and hide without age the second video change the name to 2 and render again okay now we're done I'm gonna go out and go to the file we saved the videos input videos and change rename it
to MP4. After renaming both, we are going to run the script to export the images. Now he ex is exporting all the images. that we are going to use to do the as extrinsic calibration. The first video he already finished, so I'm going to copy this first frame and create a folder, call it X3 create a folder, call it images and one paste here then I'm gonna get the first frame of the second camera go back one X3 image create a folder name it two paste here and now that we have these images for the S string C calibration I'll pick up this part that I created the folder and copy the image it's for jump to from this this command so we don't have to run it and we can go to this command folder x3 copy run here so he already run it's really fast you can see that he created another folder with the chessboard and here is the trick you can see that he created a JSON file with the points for the calibration but after you run this command you can go to the root folder and see this other folder created the output calibration input this one image and you can see the result here is the trick because you can see that it recognize it the the pattern on the floor but he didn't recognize it well you can see it is all messed up this point should be here this should be here and so on so when I run the extrinsic calibration with this data I will have problems with the pose estimation he will do let me see if I can test it to show it let me see the second camera what he found it was better but even though uh, we have problems here too so what I'm going to do is just to show the result after doing this chessbot detection we can run the where is the calibration? Just a moment. Uh, here. Calibrate the extrinsic. The intrinsic we are we have already done. Copy here and calibrate. He did some calibration. Now we are going to see what the calibration was. We're going to test it. And you can see it misses some points here he also misses when you show the command that shows the cube you also see the cube is kinda awkward 
it's not so bad. But if you run the the script for the pose estimation, you're gonna have problems. So what do we do? Let's do one thing. Let me run the script to do the open pose processing. To do that, we must get the folder that we export, that we installed the open pose. In this case, it was mocap, open pose, and get this this address. So we put the extract video, the place where the video is, the command open pose and the place that the open pose is. We copy that and place here so he can do the open pose estimation. And you can see here I'm having problems with my installation of the 1.7 so I'm gonna use my installation of the 1.5 it already detected the image that was already extracted in its running You can see that using the last version seems that he made some files and it is causing problems. Let me see this open pose, let me erase these folders and run again using the 1.5 version. of open pose it created is creating the files necessary you can test the 1.7 version of open pose if you have problems go to the version 1.5 probably you will have better luck than like i had While it's running, let me see which version was that I used. This was the, the version that this is the version that I'm using that it's working for me. positive it finishes he finished the first camera open post conversion and after finishing the first camera he started the annotation pass which creates this folder with some other JSON files that is used to the process of open pose the, the pose estimation For around a thousand seven hundred frames, it's taking me about four minutes to process them all. I pause again to wait for the second camera. Now you can see it's doing the annotation pass for the second camera, and it's about to finish. I am, must say I'm sorry for so many pauses, that's the only way I could be able to record this today. So, after he finishes the open pose pass, the annotation pass, it's all done, now we can test that extrinsic, extrinsic calibration that I said earlier that probably won't work well. So we can do this using 
let me find the command this one just have to fix the folder oh, let me see I have the intrinsic is extrinsic variables okay so let me run this to show what will happen remember that the calibration didn't go well to the extrinsic one so he started we can see in the output folder how he is doing this one it's the pose from open pose you see that he can take the upper part of the body but the rest he misses a lot of it when you see the repro that is the three dimensional placement you can see the same thing so when you have a problem with the extrinsic calibration it messes with the pose estimation in 3D space generation so what we have to do first I will stop this because it will be useless I'm gonna erase this I'm gonna erase the folder output folder and what will we do go to the input here the x3 chessboard and now at chessboard no images we open the image and we as we saw earlier there was a problem finding the places where the markers should be so what we do is we can manually say to 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 the script where the the places are so i open the image the first camera then i go to the chessboard and open this json file this key points 3d we don't have to to change we can go straight to the key point 2d and we what we can do is this this uh, program is image class is a good one to do this because you can go here and tools and use this color picker with this color picker you can see exactly where the image where in the place of the image where the points are here for example the first point it's you click and it get save it here it's four eight four four six fifty and you can you can place it here manually like this 844 and 650 then you go to the next place you go like this 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 you get the places of all these points and places here so let me finish the first one the second one click here i usually put it next to the point to know where i'm changing the data eight three four six four two eight three four it's okay six four two the next one is 822-634 822-634 so you keep doing this until you get to the end 
do this for the first camera and you do this I won't say, save now do this for the first camera and do the same thing to the second camera so you will have a better calibration I already did this so I'm gonna copy to show you extrinsic one I'll place here replace go to the chessboard 2 copy this and replace now we go to the calibration again because we changed the chessboard calibration extrinsic calibrate it again and we test the results you can see it's better it's not a hundred percent but it's much better and the cube it looks better too and now we can test again the uh, where it is triangulation it's a uh, very confusing that's why it took me so long to record this video and I probably try to do a, a better one in the future I had to do this crappy video because uh, or else it would take much longer okay he's doing the triangulation let's see the output output here you can see just by changing those parameters he did a much better job finding the place not only in the detect but also in the repro you can see it does a much better job the only difference is placing manually the checkboard position from the cameras on the checkboard this makes a huge difference another thing that you must uh, take a look is when you are calibrating your cameras the intrinsic parameters you can see if it's good or not by looking to the result of the the picture you can see this first camera has a much better calibration than the second one here it's not it's not so good I think it can cause problems mainly if I have something in the corner of the, the camera so if your picture is much more distorted than mine probably you should do a better calibration in the intrinsic parameter and then you try again the extrinsic parameter and if he doesn't find well your checkboard you do it manually like I told uh, you can use this two color picker and see exactly where in the in the picture it is but don't use this picture use the picture not the repro you go to the input your folder the x3 image and go to the specific camera and manually search the place here and save it on that checkbox json file I'm gonna pause the video to finish the that it finished because it will take a while and I'll show the result to finish the video and here it is finishing the conversion to the SPML format almost done and now it's finished with this common script finished we can see here the output is mpl file 
we can use it in Blender to import the data. So we can use the one that uh, we were already cutting the video. Use the add-on. Browse the FBX that I showed in the previous video. Choose the FBX. And import that folder that was we finished executing no cap easy output SMPL and import it's a good idea to open the console that I forgot to open so you can see how it is importing the data So here it is the data we just processed now. You can see it not the correct axis and the route is moving. So what can we do better is move into the pose mode, selecting the root bone, selecting everything every keyframe with A and delete it then we can go to the first frame and rotate this bone using R X to rotate on X axis 90 enter so it's correctly in the correct rotation and now you can use it for retargeting some other character you have and please oh okay you can if you have problems you can go to this page is it mocap will install and create an issue so we can better uh, solve the problem help you solve the problem and if you can please support it support us we have a patreon page with three tiers you can choose whatever you want it will help us a lot and we can keep creating tutorial add-on and if possible make it better each time we make it till next time thank you for watching bye bye